Day 9. Depending on how much you have been following this challenge, we are going to be painting some forget-me-nots. And these are such beautiful, small, tiny flowers, but they add so much accent to this very painting. I want to bring you through it. Let's jump in. Here's a look at the supplies that we'll be using. If you're new to my channel, I'm Jillian and I'm here to help you to embrace the mess and magic of watercolour. Let's jump into today's tutorial. Now our painting here has gotten pretty crowded and if we're going to add a third flower here, I want to start to think about the colour values that we have in terms of blue because I can see that we have got a lot of mid-tones and a lot of light tones. So the bigger flowers here are light coloured and then you've got your mid-tones here which is the scatter of all the other flowers and then in terms of the greens we have got some that are darker tones and lighter tones. So my idea is I want to add really small flowers so at this point in time at this stage you can decide if you want to play with the size of your next flower and i'm going to plan to create really really small dark blue colored flowers so that's where your dark blues are going to come from i feel like if i have got a really really big flower and it's going to be dark in color it's just going to overcrowd everything else and the attention is going to be on the giant flower and everything else is going to just suddenly disappear into the painting because you're going to focus on that bigger flower so i want to create tiny small dark colored flowers and this is where i'm thinking that the forget me not is going to be a great one and you can see that they are actually really really small tiny flowers they're really really cute with some yellow centers and then I'm going to create them in a lot darker color so that they are going to be popping a lot more and then I'm going to create the greens in a lighter color so it's almost like there's going to be that contrast of your dark little tiny specks of blue and then your lighter greens so let's see how that's going to go and as you can see the greens actually dominate a lot more than the flowers here so I'm going to have to keep that in mind when I'm painting let's start by putting my reference photo down and then spraying down my paints. I am so excited that this is something that you are journeying together with me. I'm going to start with my small round brush. Now keeping in mind that these are small flowers, so I'm going to be using my small size 6 round brush. Let's create our dark colour. So I've got my phalo blue here. And I realised that my ultramarine deep over here has basically finished and this is where my second palette is going to be where I'm going to get it so I'm going to get my ultramarine blue here um, I should really just squeeze out more in fact let's squeeze out a little moon glow which I think is going to be a really nice dark color for our forget-me-nots and I believe Moon Glow has a slight purple tinge to it. So these are absolutely beautiful colour to have. I'm creating these really tiny looking five petal flowers. Planning your painting is about figuring out where exactly you want to place the different elements. And for me, because I want the bigger flowers to be in the forefront, this is where I decided to have the forget-me-nots to be in the background. The nice thing about having them in a darker color is that they still have a draw or some kind of attention towards them because you can see that they are these delicate little darker marks that are going through the page. I am scattering them in various zigzag motions 
I also have some of them overlapping and stacked against each other because that's how nature grows. You don't want to have that symmetry. If anything, you want to focus on odd numbers, unevenness and even having some petals to be longer while others are shorter. So what we are trying to do when we are painting is we are mimicking what we observe from nature. You can also plant some of these flowers behind the bigger flowers so you can see that I have them peeking out and the nice thing is that with the dark coloured forget-me-nots and the light coloured bigger flowers you can have that contrast so it looks like the bigger flowers are kind of standing out. Now don't forget to also adjust the color values of these flowers. Add water to your paint because that's going to help you to get lighter color values and this way also create some depth in the painting. After I've mapped out my floral shapes and where I want to place them, I start to figure out where I want to put my leaves. Now if you look at the reference photo, the leaves are not very leaf shaped. If anything, many of them are folded and there's a bit of movement in there. And I want you to take that opportunity to also mimic some of that. Have these leaves that are sticking out in strange directions and have them folded and bent and take a look at the shapes. Some of them are not even pointy. They might appear like they are rectangular because they are folded and I think that when you mimic some of that, it also gives the whole painting character because you can see that the other leaves are all pretty much straight and sticking upwards and outwards. However, if we start to change up some of the way in which the leaves move in this particular plant, I think it would give the plant a bit of character considering that the flowers are pretty simple in shape. I'm using a size 12 round brush to paint these leaves and I'm also holding it very close to the brush tip as you can see and this helps to give me control when I'm painting my fine lines. Even though painting leaves and stems might seem like it's really straightforward, I have to share that so many of my members from my community has also shared with me that they struggle with creating thin stems or even trying to get out of the symmetry of leaves. So many of the time they are tend to go into wanting to paint leaves in a very symmetrical way and that's also the way in which our mind is being wired. Now I would encourage you to go out in nature, take a look at the way leaves move, sketch them out because all of this is going to help you to build muscle memory. Now apart from that would be thinking about your brushes and the type of brush that you're using to help you to paint your leaves because depending on the shape of the brush that you're using, it's going to influence the shape or the type of leaves that appear on your paper. Other than that, start to reflect on how much water you might have in your brush because if your brush has a lot of water then there's a chance that the gravity where you're holding your brush upright would result in the water coming down on your paper and that would also influence your thin lines so your lines might not look as thin if you've got a blob of water that comes onto your paper as well that being said, when it comes to painting, there really isn't any shortcut per se. It really is all about a bit of discipline where you might have to sit down and do some drills so that you build muscle memory and so that your hand kind of knows what to do in the future. Because every time you watch a YouTube video, just like when I first started out, 
one of the things that I used to ask myself is how is it that this person can do it so easily and of course one of the answers is that the video is sped up so of course everything looks a lot easier and smoother you don't see any of those hesitation there's definitely video edits but beyond that all of this takes practice it takes time so I want to encourage you to always remind yourself that your journey is so unique and it's also important wherever it is at this point in time because each day as you continue to grow in your practice your painting style and the way in which you hold your brush all of it is going to change eventually you're going to grow whether it's in confidence or in skill so regardless of how you feel or where you're at in your journey don't forget to thank yourself for showing up every time you practice even if that piece of art does not turn out like what you hoped at this stage, I am going around looking to see how the entire composition is looking. I am paying attention to white spaces. I'm also paying attention to areas where I want to add more contrast. So this is where I might add a darker leaf or I might add a lighter leaf next to a darker leaf or even add a darker color value to my stems so that they stand out a little more just to represent some of the shadows that might be going on in the foliage. So take your time to work through all of this. I love to do these overlapping and leaves hiding underneath one another because I find that it gives the entire thing so much more dimension because when you go out, you would know that the leaves actually overlap one another and some of it might be going under or over and I think when you adjust the color value of your greens, this is going to help to create that impact. Now I'm adding a little yellow gouache to the center of these forget-me-not flowers. And the reason why I'm using gouache is because the color that I used was so dark. The yellow, if I were to use watercolor, is just going to be very washed out. And so I'm using gouache. And gouache is a opaque medium which is also activated by water so if you're not familiar with gouache it's a really really fun medium the only difference is really in its opacity but it can get transparent depending on how much water you add to it as well so i'm calling brush down and i'm finished with the painting at this point in time thank you for being here i am so grateful that you have chosen this video to paint along to because I know that there are so many videos on the internet and you could be doing anything else right now and yet you are here together with me so I want to really extend my sense of gratitude to you as well as share with you that the next time we meet it's going to be so exciting because Emma Lefay and I are going to be painting pink flowers and now both of us are going to be showing our process and as we are both painting it might not look the same and this is the wonder about art because as I'm showing you my process the way you are painting and the way you interpret the reference photo, use your brushes and your paints are also going to be different. So take that as a unique quality in your art and even a defining style that you own. And hopefully you have been enjoying this series of videos because I have enjoyed making them for you. I cannot wait to see you the next time. I'll see you again.